Anyways, we've gone way off topic, haven't we? I got to piss. We, yeah, we got to put some piss tubes in this John's, place. Like John's I need a piss. PVC pipe that goes. We to haven't the even outside. we haven't even talked about the Christmas special, the uh, sweaty chocolate balls. If you think sure, I mean, if you like think during, about when, but honestly, if you think about when me and you were young kids running around Oceanside, you could get an ounce of gold for two hundred bucks. Yeah, and if we would have now, obviously, <clears throat> inflation has killed the dollar, and so if you do math, it might not be worth as much. But if we would have used our two hundred dollars and been buying ounces of gold, uh, I mean, the reality is, I could be a millionaire. It's the same thing, you know. It's that it's the same hindsight of. I really should have just been buying houses in Santee, California. Do you remember that that blazer I had? Yeah, I bought that with gold. I found it. I found a dude. I, I think it was gold of, leaf, like, wasn't it? No, it was. Uh, I bought it with like uh, gold pandas, maple leaves and pandas, I think. And it was a, a Saudi Arabian Arab dude or so, like Pierre, and he had it, and it was down in like Pacific Beach or something. And I'm like, "Will you take gold?" And his eyes light up. He's like. Yes, my friend, I will take gold. So I, I bought the blazer with gold, and it started up. And then every time you would turn right, it would short out and turn off. So you had to turn right very gently, but it did get home. And then, you know, like all the other nonsense we bought, like it turned it that the the five thousand or six thousand dollar truck turned into a you know forty thousand dollar project, truck, yeah. forty thousand yeah. dollar project. But I will say, um, I mean. How much would that gold be worth if you still had it? True. Um, but I will say that truck, that truck went through some shit. It fell on the earth. Like I when that, that day when it fell on the earth, I thought for, I was like, no way. <laughs> there is no, literally. <laughs> I don't even know how we got to where we I, were. Literally, John, we just decided to follow this. We decided to follow this bike trail one time, like a, a bike trail. So it was the, a it's bike trail. It's a missile base. Yeah. Bike trail, Manzanilla. And for those of you who've been in Manzanilla, you know it's not it's not the paint job friendly bush that you want it to be. And John just kept driving down this bike trail, driving down this bike trail, and we finally got to open road, which was really tank roads because the Marine Corps way back when used to use this place as a as a tank range. I mean, I think the reserves still used it. And we were going up this hill. First, okay, we get to this hill. It's all rocks, like the. The hill is all, it's a road, but it's all rocks. Okay? Loose rocks. John tries to go up it. Gets up a little bit. Just wheels just spinning, spinning. Now he's got, what were they, 44s? No, they're only 35s. 35, huge tire, right? Huge tires, lift kit. You know, he's got everything on this truck. I get out of the truck. I'm looking. I'm like, there's no way we're getting up this hill. It's too, it's just more and more the same. He rolls down, does it again. Rolls down, does it again. I think he did it three times, and finally the truck gets to the top of the hill. I'm like, oh, shit. It, this truck made it. We can just and power through it. He powered through it. I'm like, this truck made it. Crazy. So I get in the truck. We drive. We go. We drive another, I don't know, probably 50 yards around this corner. And the truck literally, not, there was nothing in the road. It was clear, open road. Like dirt road. Pat, Good. The truck literally falls into a sinkhole. Now, it falls into a sinkhole so deep that when John looks out his window, I could touch the, the road is right flat. here. Like the road is right here. I am six feet in the air. Now, what that tells you is two of his tires are completely off of the ground. So he's only got two tires on the ground. I'm like, there's no fucking way. There's no way. We're going to have to get another truck. We're going to have to figure out how to. We're just, there's no way. John's like, now nah, we can power through it. And so he starts rocking this thing back and forth. Now, you can imagine that half of his truck is is actually leaning against the fucking, leaning against the ground. And he's trying to power. I'm like, Pat, it can, we can do it. I'm like, there's no way. At one point, I know this sounds ridiculous. At one point, he only had one tire on the ground. The back tire was the only tire on the ground. And the truck powered through it. It pulled itself out of this hole, which, and, and I'm not, 
We didn't pull out a shovel. We didn't pull out. We didn't smash no dirt down. I didn't run around and grab a bunch of rocks and throw them underneath the wheels. John's just like, we can power through this. And that damn truck powered right through it. It's that granny first gear, that SM465 transmission, whatever that was. And then it had a 205 transfer case. And I think we had lockers in there by then. I think we had real, Maybe. You, real you had Detroit to lockers. You had to have because that, that truck just it <clears> threw <throat> anything. And so all this time we're on So a, we're also on a hill yeah. with headlights. That's like a beacon. That's like, hey, we're out here in this area where there's yeah, not supposed going, to be any headlights. Sun's going down, and they're shining. Those, these lights are shining miles. Like it's like a fucking. It's like a the bat signal. So sun's going down. We need the lights, obviously, to get out. He finally gets out, and you can see in the distance the little. It's probably a Chevy S10. I'm guessing little Navy Shore Patrol Chevy S10 that does the little perimeter check on the base every now and then. You see this little Chevy S10 with its lights on coming towards us. <laughs> so John, we pull out, we turn around, we try and go back, but we don't go back the same way. We end up on a hill next to I-13. Is that right? Is that 13 that runs through there? I don't know what it was, but we came up to. I wanted to drive through the gate, and you're like, "This can't drive through the gate." And the 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 security's on the other side, and right. they're like. The police are coming. I'm like, just unlock the gate and let us through. And he's like, I'm not unlocking the gate. I'm going to drive through your gate then. And I thought we could just inch up to the chain link and just drive over it. But Jeff's like, no, the gate will flip back up and it'll get caught in the in the drive shaft. So we found some, the gate, the, the fencing stopped at one point. But it wasn't enough to take the truck through. But I got it on the on the passenger side and just slowly gassed it, and it kind of like pivoted across. It shattered the window in the door, smash caved in that whole side of the door. But we still were free. <laughs> but we got out. And the, the security guard's just sitting there, and he's like, you have to wait for the police. I'm like, yeah, we're not, we're not doing that. We're not waiting for the police. Even though I, it's crazy to think that that, that place was completely – because we used to go out there all the time. The missile base was it, – it was a former uh, Nike site – uh, in the 50s. Still there, three three yeah. stories underground. And they closed it all down, um, you know, cut all the stuff down, but all the concrete structures and the stuff that's underground, they flooded it. I don't know if they flooded it it's, or if it just yeah. flooded over time. The this, this so two the, bottom floors are full of water. So a lot of the stuff is flooded, but the military, the only time the military was out there when the reserve guys would go out there with their tanks. So it wasn't really like, it wasn't like we were on Camp Pendleton just stomping around on Camp Pendleton. This was... It was basically really in our backyard. It used to be so called Camp of, Elliot. Yeah, like, Camp Elliot. They were training there World War II World and War II. Vietnam. Jesus. There's oh, I'm old. On a, uh, I'm on a slope. There's old fighting positions dug on the top of a lot yep. of the hills, and there's M1 Grand clips mm -hmm. out there, and like uh, 30-06 bullets, you know, from yeah. M1 Grands out there, and a lot all the mortars and shit. There's a. I mean, I don't think so. I think it's a housing now. I believe that they they built housing out there, but there used to be a. Marine Corps rifle range out there. And so you could go and you would see the, see where the range was at. But all that is Santee housing now, I think. Yeah. I'll bet there's nothing between, you used to have like area between Tira Santa and Santee. I'll bet it's fucking townhomes now. I went there. Beginning of the year back for uh, a funeral. And, uh, it's amazing what it's amazing where all the houses have been built and where the houses haven't built. Like my house in Santee um, was a, a housing project that had been done in the seventies, and right behind it there was this it was a place called White Cut that we used to go to all the time, and it, it was just you know it was hills, not woods, but hills right there. And I always thought that that would go quick because it was backed up right to the the housing project, but that's still that's still all undeveloped and. When we were Santee Lakes, they've gone. Santee oh, Lakes that. has gone way out. When you, like the SWAT team used to change, try, yeah. train out at SWAT, Santee Lakes and or uh, Lakeside yeah. Lakeside Lake, but yeah. now I'm, I'm sure it's all super overbuilt. But like even uh, the pier at Camp Pendleton or at Oceanside, everything north of there that was like the shithole ghetto back oh, in yeah, there, yeah, yeah. it's all stack and pack. It's all yep. those super tall, skinny houses and shit. Yep. You miss anything about California? Not a thing. Roberto's. I mean, I miss carne asada. That's it's, literally the only thing I miss about. California. I miss carne asada, but I don't miss it enough to even think about California. There's not. I mean, California doesn't. Sorry, California, but you don't have anything. 
You don't have any, there's nothing, there's nothing you have that is like, it's even tempting. Like, you know, I tell people all the time, you see those, you see the commercials that they do and uh, where they'll have like Arnold Schwarzenegger at, riding a four wheeler through the desert. And then they'll have uh, some famous surfer out surfing and then they'll have somebody on skis and they'll be like, come to California. You can do all this stuff. No, I used to can't. say that all the time. You pointed that. Like, no, no, John, no, no. when's the last time we rode dirt bikes and skied in the same day? I mean, again, you, you can almost say, now there's a lot of, there is a lot of people that are hardcore, like, uh, like um, off-roaders, and California has some great off-road parks, right? They have some great places, but with, with the old neutered gaps and closing all the electric things down, and it won't be long till those off-road parks are closed too, but they have great off-road parks out there. So if you had a, you know, if you had a four-wheeler and an RV and you could go out to the desert, it's just... It has become such a fucking hassle to do anything in California. I mean, I I would go, I would take my RV to Vegas, but if you were going anywhere in California with your RV and your shit, you have to leave at five o'clock in the morning. And even if it's only four hours away, you ain't getting your your camp's not set up till the sun's going down. That's true. We used it's to. Just, it's a it's a disaster. We used to. We would go to Vegas. I mean, yeah. you and we'd go to Henderson or whatever. Yeah. We, we never fucked around in California anymore. To go just shooting in California to someplace outside, it was two and a half hours. You'd have to drive two hours. To go Every, ride dirt bikes, it was two hours. I mean, we rode everywhere you weren't supposed to ride yeah. because that's, that's how everybody with a dirt, dirt bike did. Bike and young. But, I mean, it was fun. Like, they used to chase you with a helicopter and try to blow you over, but they didn't, like swoop you up and arrest you and shit but and now you know, the, the crazy thing about when i think what about, are you in for illegal dirt bikes yeah the crazy thing about when i think about uh the shit i used to do when i was a kid you know in my teenager years as far as that kind of stuff just going out places where once even when the cops got you like one time i one time one time twice uh, it was a lot but i snuck out of the house with my best friend and two girls they will rename nameless we weren't doing anything. We were just walking around. It was just walking around the streets of Santee, this little suburban area we live, Via Rita, right? We had just left my buddy's house, and we're walking down his street. We were going towards my house. We weren't. There was not any fornication going on. There was no drugs. There was no alcohol. We were just out walking because we had convinced these our girlfriends to sneak out with us. It was like midnight. Police car comes around the corner. Sheriff's Department, because that's what we had in Santee, comes around the corner. Woo! The girls immediately freeze. Me and Dave take off running. <laughs> Dave jumps into a bush right in front of this house. I run down the side of the house and think I'm going to jump over this fence. And there I am with my hands on the fence and my feet running on the fence, trying to climb the fence. I can't get over the damn fence. The cop comes around the corner and he's like, shines his flashlight down there. And he's like, I have to go down there. I'm going to pull my gun out. <laughs> And so we immediately surrender. We're like, oh, he's going to pull his gun out. Let's surrender. So we surrender and walk to him. We're like, we weren't doing nothing. We were just out walking. And he's like, you were just out walking with girls. And we're like, yeah, we were just out. Uh. And, you know, we tell him the story of what we were doing and shit. And he's like, all right, this is what's going to happen. I'm putting the girls in the car. I'm going to take them home and drop them off. You too. You're going to go home and you're going to tell your parents <laughs> what you were doing when you get home and we're like, you know, I, I see Dave looking at me. He's like, yeah, we're going to tell our parents. And then he goes, I'm going to call them tomorrow. <laughs> oh, so anyway, how'd they get the phone number? Cause we gave it to oh, him. Got it. Yeah, okay. we, I, I think we're, I think I was, did you not ever get stopped like 10 or playing 12 BB gun wars or anything? I, that happened too. We, we had the Astro helicopter. Yeah. So the helicopter, and, yeah. the SWAT team, they're like, we've been tracing you guys for three yeah. hours, but they immediately let us go home. Yep. I gave us the guns back. Yeah, I immediately woke up my mom, told her, got my ass whipped. Sheriff's department never called. <laughs> you know, we had another incident where, like John said, we were way back at Camp Elliott. It's, it's kind of a long story. We we used to go out back there. Our our game was to get them to chase us. Yeah. Like that was ours, our most fun was to get security ours to wasn't. chase us. Ours was all about the war. It was all about the war. And at the time, I was in ROTC, so it was probably eleventh grade. And they take you to Camp Pendleton, and they have you do these. You get to do all this cool military stuff, shoot the M16s and the M60s and shit. Well, they took us on this E and E course, and this E and E course had these simulated flashbangs and flares on it. And so me and my buddy Dave are like, we're disarming them, putting them in our pockets. And so we've got like five of these things. 
go back to Santee. We got our little simulators, and we're like, yeah, we're going to use them in the war this weekend. And so we, back in Camp Elliott, there's this, there was this hill right in the middle of the valley. And so we play, you know, who can who can hold the hill? And so me and Dave are out there setting up all these flashbangs, <laughs> all these simulators, and uh, somebody calls the police because we're out at, you know, we're out here. They fly Astria out there. Now, Astria was a Korean War helicopter, two-seater, just like just like they had on MASH. Like the Mosquito. Yeah, and it would it flew out there, and he's like, he comes in, and he's flying low, and, you know, there's there was 30 kids out there in camouflage running around this hill. Nowadays, they'd be like terrorist training oh, yeah. camp. Yeah, definitely terrorist training. And so he flies in low, and he's like, hey, you guys are trespassing. You need to go home. And so kids are running off the hill and shit, running around, and he gets he gets a little too low, and his prop wash fires off one of these simulators. <laughs> so he thinks that we're shooting at him. So he has to he does an emergency landing, calls in the motorcycle cops and like forty motorcycle. I, I don't know where they got all the dirt bikes. Santee Sheriff's Department, where'd you get all those dirt bikes? They show up on all these dirt bikes. And round us all up and line us all up and do the shakedown and everything. And we tell them what we're doing and all that. And the, and the same thing. The sheriffs were like, give me those damn simulators. They collected up all the simulators and they're like, don't do that again. You scared the hell out of the pilot. And then they just got on their motorcycles and left. <laughs> I mean, I, I know for a fact that I'm glad I did not grow up like now or even 10 years ago because we'd have all been in jail. We'd have been, yeah. For, we'd have all been in jail for shit that for like real sentences. <laughs> for yeah, for shit that that kids really should be doing. Like, right, we were digging this. We were digging this trench line. We were out behind Rio Seco digging this trench line. We had to have been, I don't know, six, maybe seventh grade. We're digging this military trench line because that's what you did when you were in the military. You dig these foxholes, and so we're we we're digging this trench line. And we're walking to it one day. We're all in camouflage. And there's some bob wire on the ground. And I'm like, oh, bob wire. You know what? You know what a trench needs? Bob wire. So I'm dragging like 15 feet of bob wire behind me. We get, we have to go behind the school to get to this place. Now, this is a big open field. Nobody cares that we're out there. The police don't even care we're out there. It was actually behind Las Colinas. Um, I'm sure the prison might have cared that we were digging tunnels, but. Um, and so yeah, now I'm no on idea, the though. street, I'm on the street and I'm dragging this piece of bob wire and this police car comes, whoo, whips in and comes right to where we're at. And I've got bob wire in my hand and I'm dragging it. And as the car stops, I'm like, maybe the bob wire is not a good idea. So I do the flick. I do the hand flick with the bob wire. <laughs> and he comes over and interrogates for a half hour. And he's like, what are you using the bob wire for? Are you trying to? You trying to tangle up my car or something? Is that what you're doing? You're trying like he really thought we were using and then, you know, once You think very highly of yourself. Yeah, once he realized once he realized what we were actually doing, he's like, All right. Don't make a mess out there. And then he just drove away. But I mean, that's crazy. That's that's crazy old times. Now? Now no, now we would have been arrested. There's no there's no doubt about it. I mean, we would have been arrested. We were probably way too close to Las Colinas prison, digging tunnels and shit. Um, which Las Colinas prison, for most people that don't know, was a it's female. Yes, yeah, the women prison in Santee, California. Um, and we were way too close to that prison. Um, we had bob wire, which I mean, James I'm sure would be today like, is a... James would be like, they release them on Wednesday. I'm yeah, gonna go, I'm gonna go pick up some Las Colinas quail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they release them on Wednesday. I, I'm pretty sure then, some of them I, girls, he probably did pick them. And there up was literally from getting released from jail. Like Las Colinas, like the Las Colinas, not, was, not James Jaeger. Uh, yeah, not James Jaeger. Las Colinas was off of the main road, so it was back a little bit. So the girls would have to walk down a road to get to the main road in Santee. And when you turn the corner, about, I don't know, probably like two buildings down was a taco shop, and they would all stop at that taco shop, and that's where James would be buying tacos. Hey, baby, you want some tacos? You want some free tacos? <laughs> yep. That was uh, it was pretty close to the Santee, Santee Gun, Gun Shop. Shop. Yeah, Santee Gun Shop, where I bought all my illicit hardware. Illicit. So what do you do? You, so what do you put your cash into? Like, what would you what, cash? Cash. Cash. Well, I mean, the reality is, I put my cash into fuel, food, bullets. I think that guns. I think if you had bought firearms or bullets, let's just say bullets, 
no matter in in the hundred last hundred years of history, you never would have lost any of your money. Yeah, you don't. It, you would profit more than any other investment. Well, had you bought gold, I mean, maybe not Bitcoin. Had you bought Bitcoin at certain times, you definitely would oh, have yeah, made you, a ton more money. I mean, money. that's that's the thing about a pyramid scheme. You got to get in on the bottom. If you're if you're the if so you're the first hundred, you're fucking buying boats and. So shit. there's this thing called Bitcoin obituary, uh-huh. and it's it's hundreds <laughs> of times where media has been like, Bitcoin's oh, dead. It's never yeah. coming. It always bounces back higher. So if you're if you're holding Bitcoin right now, if you had a million dollars in Bitcoin. Uh, two years ago, and your Bitcoin is at nothing right now. Hold your Bitcoin; it's going to go back every time it goes up. It's going to go up higher. Yeah, it yeah, always I, goes not, up higher. Again, I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm not saying if you have Bitcoin to flush your Bitcoin down the toilet or anything like that. Um, again, it's an investment, just like any other stock on the market. Um, if you play it right, you have the opportunity to make a lot of money. But do not believe for one second that when digital currency goes mainstream that bitcoin will be part of that equation the whole point of bitcoin the whole point of bitcoin and and i would want bitcoin for this reason if i was going to buy a crate of m4 carbines from afghanistan that's the whole point of bitcoin the whole point of bitcoin was to be able to make transactions that were semi non-traceable by the government and still have an economy, have a, a economy of work system, meaning drug cartel guys could take their, instead of putting, stuffing all their money into a storage locker down at Venice Beach, they could actually turn it into Bitcoin and buy a Ferrari. They couldn't do that before. All those $100 bills that you see you narco guys running around with, they can't just go buy shit anymore. It's not like the 80s. They can't buy condos in Miami. They can if they convert it to Bitcoin. And that is why you have a steady stream of money that keeps going into Bitcoin is because you have illicit streams of money that are being used to prop up Bitcoin. When the U.S., when, when the United States or China or Russia, whoever has the dominant currency, whoever, whoever comes out on top at the end of this, when they, when they put out their digital currency, <laughs> all these other ones, the fucking... Uh, Elon Musk's and all those are going to be antiquated and you're going to lose your ass on those things because they're going to crush those. They're going to crush those currencies because they need you to use their currency. Um, Right now, China gives right now. China is doing Bitcoin paying their citizens through a Bitcoin service. Their Bitcoin has an expiration date. So when you take your paycheck and you put it in your account, you have a certain amount of time where you have to spend that money or that money fucking disappears. So there's no generational wealth. You can yep. never, so you can you, never rise in your class. So structure. you can, so you continue to be the slave that you are. I mean, I, but is it a China crypto or is it actually Bitcoin? No, it's a China. It's an actual Chinese crypto. Got it. Got it. Yeah, so not a, Bitcoin. It's not Bitcoin. It's yeah, not, Bitcoin's not that doing generally. that. Like I said, Bitcoin is if, if you, uh, right now, Bitcoin is a, it's just a commodity. And if you want to invest in that commodity and, and watch it and manipulate the market in order to make money. You have an opportunity to do that. But Bitcoin has created this monster that governments are going to use to control people. And they're going to do that through digital currency. So because you can just shut digital currency off. Trudeau came out and he's like, okay, all these guns are illegal. Boom. Why didn't he just say they're all illegal? None of you, none of you can have guns. Turn them in. How come they didn't do that in Canada? I don't, I, you know, because uh, he was pretty fucking close to it. I don't know. So how far, when's that happening here? Shit. It's, um, Democratic Party wins the November election. So if the Democratic Party wins the ne- November elections and they control the House and the Senate, what they have to do is they, okay, so contrary to all the, uh, all the YouTube videos and all the, the bloggers that are trying to scare you about Joe Biden's going to fucking take away your AR 15s or Joe Biden's going to do Joe Biden can't do shit because of what the Supreme court did. If because they, of the, the Supreme court seems to be doing more and more of yeah, it because of the rulings that the Supreme court has been doing. Um, the eight, believe it or not, the ATF is going to get neutered. They're going to get neutered hard. Um, and, Gun grabbing places like California and New York are losing their court cases because of what, um, not Scalia, uh, 
I can't think of the justice, but what his his case precedent setting by making them have to use um, history in order to make these determinations is killing all the gun grabbing. The only thing that can happen to stop, the only thing that can happen is if the Democrats take the House and the Senate, then Obama will immediately, or not Obama. Um, Might as well be. Whoever is running our current president, because it's not him, he he's not... He's not doing anything. Um, they will have to pack the Supreme Court. So basically, what they'll have to do is they'll have to put thirteen justices. They'll have to put thirteen liberal justices on the Supreme Court in order to change case law. They will have to do that. The case law has to be changed. They can't even because of the way the because of the way the Bruin decision was. They can't even do an assault weapons ban. Like they can't do it because it's against the Second Amendment. So they can't if if you know, when the Senate is like, we're going to do assault weapons ban, and they pass that and everybody signs it, they know that that fucking ban is dead in the water. There's nothing they can do with it. Even if the House and Senate, like, if the House and Senate came out tomorrow and they're like, we're doing a fucking assault weapons ban, here's the law, all assault weapons are illegal in the United States. No, it's going to go to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court's going to be like, boop, shit can it, you cannot deprive American citizens of their Second Amendment rights. So, I mean, the, the, the courts, I mean, if you pay attention, all the courts have been kicking ass as far as gun rights. Um, so the only way that the only way they're ever going to take our guns is if they actually take complete power and they stack the courts and then they make decisions based off of a stack court. Why do you think they really want, what do you think it's really about? Why do they want to take people's guns away? Oh, c- c- totally control. <clears throat> so you don't think it's because they, they, they do not believe it's going to make a safer society. No, it has nothing to do with safety. There's no, there's not a single safe. If you can, you can be rest assured that if a, a congressional member comes out to you and he says, this is about the safety of our children. There's nothing in there that has anything to do with children, child safety. Nothing, it, nothing. It's all fucking bullshit. That's how they, that's how they, so they, they can get you, you to vote for it because you feel, oh, I got to support the children, even though it doesn't do anything for children. So they can feed you crickets and put you in the camp. Feed you and cricket, put you. Well, I mean, you can the ride the exercise is, bike and recharge their batteries. The reality is, you you take PayPal for example. PayPal, because because PayPal doesn't understand how bots affect the psyche of peoples. PayPal did not understand that all this wokeism is really mostly bots. It's not real. Um, and so they yeah, thought it's, it's fake manipulated yeah, through fake, social media, fake manipulation, less than 1% of the population. gets a lot And of so police. they thought, Hey, you know, it'd be a great idea if we punish people for their transactions or what they speak about. And then they found out it's not bots. It's the majority of the people that, cause you know, ultimately it boils down to this. What is hate speech? They're making that up right now. They're making it up. It's not, it's not real. They're just making it up. And because they make it up, they can decide whatever you're saying is either good or bad. And the current administration is saying that you have to toe the line with Joe Biden. But for all you liberals who are cheering this on, what happens if Donald Trump, let's just say Donald Trump wins the next election. Are you going to cheer on for Donald Trump and what he is going, what that government could possibly do. I mean, you know, the reality is that it's the permanent government that's doing all this anyways. It's not presidential elect. I mean, even Donald Trump said, I can't leave Afghanistan because the department of defense, the war machine will not let me leave. Um, so I don't know if there's, if there's ability to save any of this. Ooh, did you hear that? My stomach. Anyways, I don't know if there's an ability to save any of this, uh, The only thing you can really, I mean, the only thing you can really do is just prepare yourself to be as self-sufficient as you possibly can and hope that you can weather out the storm of whatever it is. Because, you know, the the left wants a war. They want a war with Russia. They want a war with China. And they want a war with the 49% of the United States population that they consider um, basically political terrorists because they didn't vote for their candidate even though their candidate is probably the worst president we have ever had in the history of this country. Do you believe that it was really 49%? I think, I think that it's greater than that. As far as the people that support that are Republicans. No, you said the people that voted for it. I don't, I don't, 
I don't think all no, those no, people no, have no, voted no, for no, him. Voted here, for again, you can believe what you want to believe in fairy tale land, but there is no, no possible way. I mean, I want you to think about this. There's no possible way that Joe Biden, Joe Biden, got more, more votes, votes than Obama. Than not just Obama, any president ever, mm. and he got more votes than Joe Biden. Not a chance. Not a chance did 80 million people vote for that clown. It's just, it's not possible. They don't even have, the, the, that's that's more votes than registered Democratic voters. It's not possible. Do you think that, let's, so people that truly voted for him, right? Yeah. And that, that's their guy. Do you think there's any of them today that think that, that, that was oh, a good still, idea. Like, like no, 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 no. they they're, can look at the world and be like, "Wow, we're doing really better right now than they, we were three years ago." They're a hundred percent on board because it's about a power shift dynam. It's it's about shifting power, and because power has been shifted to the left in this in this particular instance, because the power has been shifted and it's been shifted widely. Because but it has to be affecting them in a negative manner. <clears throat> I mean, go. They don't. Amanda brought groceries home. They don't care. Amanda brought groceries home, and I opened up the back of the floor runner, and we use these folding plastic bins, right? Mm -hmm. And there's three of them, and I'm, I said, how much did this cost? She said seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, that makes sense. And I go, you used to bring groceries in here for four hundred and fifty five hundred dollars, and there was nine of these. Nine of these things will sit in the back cargo area, but she had three, and it was seven hundred and fifty bucks. And it like it literally like slapped me in the face. Like I I knew, I feel things like every time we order material, we don't like it, it, ordering Cordura right now is like ordering fucking steel from U.S. Steel, right? Yeah, I bet it they is. quote us a price the day after I put my order in. They tell me how much it's going to cost. Like we don't even know what it costs today. And the shipping, like when we would unload pallets of Cordura, it was we'd ride at the the courier, the semi truck driver. We'd hand him two hundred a check for two fifty. Dude, it's eight hundred bucks every yeah. time the truck comes in here now. So, well, I mean, the reality is. I mean, the, the Mac when's the last time you bought diesel? The cheeseburgers are up. Everything's fucking up. I mean, even the craziest person that voted for him has to feel it in a negative in their pocket. But I mean, book. even even you think about it. When's the last time you bought diesel? Do you buy diesel? I do. I mean, it's almost five bucks a gallon yeah. here. Well, we used to fill our bulk tanks right for a thousand dollars. The truck would come in, and we'd fill two trucks we fill two of those big tanks yeah. dude you don't even fill one of them for a thousand bucks yeah it's it, so and that's and that's the thing that people don't pay attention to um is when you go and you're at the pump and you're looking at your your gasoline and you're like eh, it's so expensive you need to look around the corner at the green pump that's the only pump that matters there's no semi trucks that are running around town using gas engines they're all diesel and every single thing that you get from a sewing needle to a Twinkie to toilet paper. It's all coming on a diesel truck. That cost is going to the consumer. The, same, the, same with the trains. Yeah, the truck driver's not paying. The truck driver's not paying $8 a gallon for fuel in California. Hell no. People in California are. And all of that, I want you to understand, the price that you are paying at the pump is total political. It's a total political stunt. We were... We were fuel independent under Trump. Now, nothing changed. Like the wells didn't dry up, the gas, the the uh, refineries didn't close. Nothing changed except the Biden administration shut off all new prospects, closed the pipeline. It's the Biden administration that is doing this, and they're doing it because they want everybody to have electric cars and fucking yeah, 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 yeah. But that's a fantasy. Do you think it's because? They believe it's better, or for the environment, or do you think no, it's because I, it's, they're getting a kickback somehow yeah, one, from the electric cars? It is one hundred. This is one hundred percent a. Um, it's a. It's a shift in money. So it's about graft, and yeah, it's about graft. I mean, take a look at take a look at uh, Black Lives Matter. What have they done for Black Lives? What what is what is that? What is Black Lives Matter as a foundation done for Black Lives? It's bought some million dollar mansions. Hadn't done anything for Black Lives. Hadn't helped a single person out on the street. Nobody. Except make some people very rich. And let's not forget that 90% of all the Black Lives Matter donations that went to the Democratic Party went to white candidates. So it's not, it, it's, it's all a fucking scam. I mean, you know, they talk about Pfizer. 
Pfizer got um, Pfizer got the biggest fine that's ever been levied against a company that they had to pay out because of the opioid crisis. The opioid crisis, by the way, is still going on. It's the number one killer of young people in this country. And everybody has just completely forgot about it. But what did we do right after that? We gave Pfizer an open checkbook for COVID vaccinations that do nothing, that help you in no way. As a matter of fact, you might want to get on your VPN and start seeing what the European the European news agencies are saying about the COVID vaccination. It's not looking good. That's the mRNA stuff. Yeah, it's the mRNA stuff. It's not looking good. It's not all of them, apparently, but the mRNA stuff, they have something. It's it's so prevalent <coughs> um, in young males, young males being, I think, 15 to 30-ish, right? But uh, sudden infant death syndrome, right? Yeah. SIDS, we had this thing when, you're, when your baby died and we couldn't explain it. It was just SIDS. And now they have a term called SADS, sudden adult death it's, syndrome. Yeah. And, it, and it looks like the body... I, I haven't looked deeply into it, but it looks like most of those people had that specific or that group of vaccinations. Well, the European Union is, they actually are going after Pfizer because again, you know, Pfizer pays people in Europe to be rich, but the real rich people are here in America. So the Europeans don't have a problem going after those CEOs. And they just had a big thing where they were talking about how many people did they, um, do their their studies on before they released it. Apparently, yeah, Zero. I saw. Well, some of the studies that were given, everyone in the study died. Yeah. Well, we, we we're in a we know somebody. We know somebody who actually does the animal trials for uh, um for those type of before those type of um things, and this individual was actually doing uh, COVID and SARS. And one other one, there was a, there was actually a, 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 a virus that was coming out of Africa. I can't remember what they called it, but they were doing the animal trials. The animal trials for COVID ended six months ago, which means if the animal trials just ended six months ago, um, they haven't done any human trials except for everybody who lined up and went and got a vaccine. You guys were all in the trials. And even uh, Fauci was like, if you watch any of Fauci's stuff pre-COVID and he talks about um, vaccines, he will tell you there is immediate reaction. So like when you go and get your shot and they're like, hey, you're going to you're gonna feel hot and tingly and maybe you want to sit down and stay here for a minute. But then there's, there's short-term, um, mid-term, and long-term reactions. And for the FDA, long-term reactions are out 12 years. So... We have no idea. We have no idea what the long-term or even the mid-term reactions are going to be for these uh, vaccinations because they the, never did the studies. Did you see the footage when they were asking Fauci, I don't know, 80s or 90s, um, about a vaccination for AIDS? Yeah. And he said it, it, we probably couldn't ever do it because it would just be it was too dangerous yeah. to do it in human testing. We, we couldn't ever do I that. I mean, what most people don't know is Fauci, uh, Fauci is a fucking stone cold killer. Yeah. Like, he is a fucking killer. Like, they knew AIDS was in San Francisco. They yeah. sat on that shit for four years. He's a stone-cold killer. I mean, not only did he, not only does he, not only was he part of that, but he, you know, look at his Beagle studies. Yeah, I saw <laughs> I mean, come on, the guy is a, he shouldn't be trusted with any of our medical stuff because he is total establishment. They have swept him away and buried him pretty well. Well, he has spent a lot of money. To be swept to be away. swept away and buried. He has a he has a detail that's better than the president's. You don't think he's sitting over in like New Zealand in one of the bunkers right now or something? May, may I, he's probably he's probably at some secluded place here in the United States somewhere. Because you know every now and then he pops out and he's like, "Hey, that mask you made out of t-shirt. Go ahead and put that on." <laughs> you know. Did you see all the video of the? It looked like Indian or India or Pakistan or something. They're in a dirt floor building making, and like they've got a bunch of sewing machines running, putting the edging on these N95 masks yeah. or whatever. But there's a dude that doesn't have hands, and he's on the floor with his feet hold, <laughs> passing these masks. I mean, I it it looked real. I don't, who knows? I mean, I, I, you think about it. We, we outsource most of our stuff anyway, so it 
yes, if you got your M95 mask at 7-Eleven, it probably was yeah, some dude's feet. It's just the way it is. I mean, you think 7-Eleven has a factory where they make M95 masks? They don't even make their own chips. Their branded chips come from Lay's. Come from the same factory that Lay's is. So when you buy 7-Eleven barbecue chips, they're no different than the Lay's barbecue chips because they just, yeah, at night, they turn the light switch off and they tell all the Lay's employees to go away. And then they have the the illegal immigrants that they snuck across the border in there at night making 7-Eleven chips. That's just the way it is. I saw, um, I was in Clarksville. Sorry, 7-Eleven. I do love your products. Clarksville a couple of days ago and there's a Jack in the Box. I'm like, go over there. I'm going to get some of them super tacos. And she's like, Jack in the Box? It, it, it was closed. Like it hadn't opened yet or yeah. I don't know what the deal was. So I didn't get super tacos. But across the street was a 7-Eleven they were building. I've, I've seen one 7-Eleven in Tennessee ever. And we saw one just last weekend too. The weird thing about, so 7-Eleven. They were in California. You guys that don't know, like they're literally on multiple blocks, cat yeah. corner. 7-Eleven was, if you wanted a fountain drink, 7-Eleven was the place to go. And it ruined me, just like the Mexican food ruined me in California. Um, for whatever reason, and I don't know if it's because there's too much humidity here or what, y'all can't get a damn fountain drink to be not flat. Your fountain drinks suck here in Tennessee, just like your Mexican food. Sorry. But you think, you think maybe it's because they don't have the poison in it that California makes them have? Like maybe, but... The, uh, the Bic lighters in California are different. Whatever that fuel is in those things, when we moved here, it smells more like kerosene. It has a different odor, and the lighters do not last Well, that could long. be because you're in Camden. All the toxic stuff comes to Camden. Yeah, maybe. Maybe and so. Those were the... They probably are kerosene lighters that, they, that Bic couldn't sell From anywhere the Civil in the War. world. Yeah, and they're just like, send them to Camden. Camden will buy them. Costco, Camden. Okay, so you you we've watched. so we're so off topic. We should be talking about disposable gear and how you, you know you can just throw this away. Okay, so let's let's it. touch that. Okay, so disposable gear. The conversation where that went to was it's because these kids now. Okay, so I'm like, okay, well, we would market this if we were going to do a promo video for this. We would do a bank robbery because this is the bank robbery rig, yeah, it's right? The bank robbery kit, but, right there. But what's the practical application, right? So we do some cool heat type video stuff and. The practical application is you can wear this rig with four M4 mags and four pistol mags or a radio, whatever you want to put in here. You can wear this thing around and drive literally six hours and not even think twice about this thing being on. You do not feel it when you're when you're jocked up and it's in the in the car, right? So you come out of the truck, you got to go to the gas station, whatever you throw on a button-up shirt, a zip-up shirt, whatever. As long as this is black right here, nobody's even going to question against a black shirt that you've got four M4 mags with you while you're up in the gas station taking a piss, whatever you're doing. So that's how, and Jeff's like, you don't see the fucking 10 Blackhawks right behind them. You like those guys, when they roll up on the door, you don't see the dude next to them, their caddy with their fucking big golf club thing. Not really, but I mean, it's akin to that, right? For every time a, a detachment goes out like that, they got two fucking units of Rangers with yeah, them. I, I mean, it's that, uh, it's, I'm going to, I'm going to, Break a, I'm going to break a, uh, a wall here um, for all my Delta Force guys and my there's my some, guys, my some guys, smart ass kids right now. They don't even call them Delta Force. My anymore. guys over the fence, my guys that are over over on the other side of the fence, you have to load magazines. I know you don't understand this because when they come to you, they're preloaded. But believe it or not, there's some poor kid from the 82nd Airborne in a U-Haul van putting those bullets in those magazines that you shoot. You can reload those magazines. So when you're just throwing them on the ground because they come preloaded and you think that that 30 round magazine is just uh, an expendable item because that's the way you guys roll in the real army, they have to reload their magazines, the individual trooper, and he's accountable for those bad bears. So if he goes out with six, he has to come back with six. I'm just, I'm trying to break a wall for you guys. So you understand that there is a lonely, lonely, guy from the 82nd Airborne who was all excited because he was going to fap out to Delta Force, get to go on the other side of the fence, and all he's doing is sitting in that van loading all your magazines. And they, prob- sad, sad they also might not know that before the bullets get put in the magazines, they come in an ammo can. And yeah. inside the ammo can are these little cardboard things, right? There's 840 of these in there. And when you open it up, you pull this thing out. It's this pack of shitty gauze material, and it has these these bullets on these clips, right, these stripper clips. 
and then it's got an adapter that'll actually go on the mag, and you can push them in there. Like you've yeah. never seen any of this, but no, they, that they, is the case. The, the, the guys that the guys that are on the other side of the fence don't know that that's how that works. I think they should do like uh, like when we used to go to Trexpo, Tactical Response Expo or whatever, and HK would come out. HK had these like Playboy bunnies dressed up in like rubber suits. And they would load your mag. So you just stand in line, shoot the MP5, yeah. stand in line, shoot the I G3. Bet, the, the the Delta Force guys should just hire chicks. Well, I bet that's probably where that happened. That like Larry Vickers and a couple of his buddies were hanging out at Trexpo. And they're like, we should get some Playboy models. They're like, man. And the Army's like, it would be we don't really, have those, but it, we got these guys for you. It would you. be really cool if someone would load our magazines for us. And then we didn't have to load all those magazines and we could shoot guns. And then somebody was like, well, they're not going to give us girls. And they're like, yeah. But if we tell the 82nd Airborne we got a cool-ass FAP, where one of your two of your guys are going to get to come over to Delta and see what we do, we can make them do anything. And sure as shit, that's what they do. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, who knows? Who knows what the ninjas are doing now? They probably don't even I, – I bet they don't even put the magazines in their guns. They're just like – they shoot it, and then they throw it down, and somebody hands them another gun. There's just like this – like John said, a golf cart behind them, and these 82nd Airborne guys just throwing them fucking guns. It's like uh, them, you them. used to see these videos of these uh, armor chassis suits, right? Yeah. It's like a like a gym suit or something. Like Sigourney Weaver got in to kill yeah. the alien, right? They had those things. You used to see them 15, 20 years ago. You see these videos. What you never saw was the fucking trailer of batteries yeah, behind the motherfucker. Behind you never saw that. Um, so what you had said was it, this stuff is disposable, right? They're going to hit it and they're going to fucking exfil. They're going to leave this right in the vehicle or whatever they exfilled in that they're going to yeah, torch, the guy, right? The they're going to burn that thing. All the gears going with it, the comma, the crypto, everything's getting burned, you know, you got because it's disposable. But here in the United States for 99.9% .9 of the customers who will buy this product, this isn't the product. This is a very, very niche specific product. If you're hitting banks or you're driving in a vehicle. I mean, I, and what you said was they don't realize this shit's disposable. And if it ever comes time for a U.S. citizen to jock up, disposable is not what you fucking need. Yeah, you don't you don't want disposable. I mean, I, I you know, we were just I this is the first time I've seen this rig. Um, uh, and. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a no, good. It's a good piece yeah. of kit. And what John says is right. For all you guys that are, for all you guys that are like, I need a backpack gun, or I need a truck gun. This thing's perfect because just like he said, you got a, you got your M4 in the console somehow strapped to the ceiling or whatever the hell you're doing. It's Tennessee, bro. You can just carry. Yeah, you can just right carry it there on your, on your spare if you, seat. If you think you need a a, a vehicle M4, this is perfect because you can actually put this on. Put your jacket on. Nobody's going to know that you have those magazines. So when you do think you're in a situation where you have to pull out that M4, you actually have the stuff with you that you need. So it's it's actually a good piece of kit for that. But if you're the guy that's going to fucking load uh, 308 mags in here, throw it in the back of your truck, and 10 years from now, pull it out and be like, I'm ready to go. Well, you know, elastic is just elastic. Okay, so let me show you this. Maybe, maybe I can win you over here. You gonna win me over? Maybe you might. You might not. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. If, no, I'm with you. If I had one, I'd use it. But I'm what with I'm you. saying is, but look, okay, four four mags covert. Uh -huh. Now things have things have changed, right? Now things have changed. Now, we're gonna go. We're gonna up jacket, armor. Jackets off. Now you got three or six more mags. Six more mags. Right. All right. And you might want you might want your frags or your bangs, right? Okay. Frags, bangs, whatever. Oh, oh, so now we got a... So this will actually a, sandwich What, what so do they you, call that? Dangler. A dangler. Yeah, a dangler. Dangler, like when yeah. you don't wipe good enough. A dangler. Dangler. So you can actually scale this thing from one of these sexy little... Well, that, I mean, that makes it that makes it more useful because you can scale it. Um, but so you go from four to seven, and then you can run eight, nine, you can have ten on there. I know it's not your accustomed 24 loadout. Well, I mean, if you're going to have them, you need to have them. Why, why fuck around? But we can still run like a, a, a backpack, right? So you can have your lunch with it. And yeah, you can put a sandwich more in mags. there. You could easily put a sandwich in there. A little peanut butter, maybe some jelly. So it's, it's neat. I mean... No, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying... I had, told, I had told James, he's like, I go, if you could only have one gun, what would you have? And I don't, I don't remember what he said. 
I'm sure he had it, right? Whatever it was, he probably had it in his pocket. And I'm like, I would want a stainless lever action. He's like, why? I go, because I could just leave it on my four-wheeler even when it rains. Like, it wouldn't matter. He's like, John, it's stainless, not stainless. <laughs> it stains less. Like, you still can't leave that shit outside in the rain. Uh, I mean, that, again, it's, you know, everybody, everybody tries to... Everybody tries to follow what the ninjas are doing. Ninjas are doing ninjas doing this. Ninjas doing that, and that's that's kind of that. You, this is all when you think about how he just put that together. That's all a byproduct of of Molly Gear, the military using Molly Gear. And what most people don't know is the point of Molly Gear was so that at the end of my tour, when I was going to turn all my Molly Gear in, that I would be standing in front of Sif and I would be missing four things. So the military could charge me for those four things because I didn't have it attached to the thing that because they give you too much shit. But end of the world, none of this light fighter. Sh- you're not going to be using any of this light fighter shit. You're going to be using a heavy fucking rucksack. You're going to be using a chest rig that John made in the fucking nineties because you literally could attach it to the back of the, your car and drag it down the freeway. And when you got to the place you were supposed to be at, you're going to be like, oh shit, I forgot that my chest rig was on the back. Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. Let me get that and use it. I mean, that's the reality. That's the, like the reality that I grew up in the nineties. Um, you know, in the Marine Corps, everything was falling apart. We were still using deuce gear from Vietnam. And so everything's falling apart. And there's John at the gun show trying to sell his belts and his, his kit out of a booth at the gun show. And I'm like, they literally could drag me behind a helicopter with this gear and it's going to survive. We did. So I need some of this. And you know, it's still the, in the, in the market, in the industry, it's still the toughest. Like spear makes good gear. Spear is again, probably the tip of the spear when it comes to innovation and using new technology, but spear makes disposable kit. I mean, they still make, they still make some, some rugged stuff, but if they're making stuff for Delta Force and they're making stuff for Navy SEALs, the cri- the only criteria out of those guys is light, light, light. They don't care if after two missions the buckle falls off because they literally they have a big-ass bin, even just the regular SEAL teams, they have a big-ass bin, they walk by it, they throw that thing in the bin, and then the supply guy goes, here you go, buddy, here's some more booties. So... Why do I care how long it lasts? I mean, obviously it needs to last a mission, but 80s and 90s, the ninjas were going out. They were going out and doing missions and doing missions, and they were probably using the same gear, but they don't do that anymore. When a fucking buckle falls, they're not putting tape on it or a fucking shoe gets a hole in it. They're not They're not pouring shoe glue in there. They're turning that shit in and getting new ones. I mean, even in the 90s, oh, we had... Even it. We had some SEALs come through sniper school. And all the craze back then was uh, Danner boots. You had to have the Danner Arcadius. Arcadius, 8 inch. You had to have the Danner Arcadius. And Marines, we had to pay for that shit. So we had to pay the $189 for those boots. And you would wear them until there was no tread left on them. And these SEALs come up, and they're going through the course, and they're like, hey, I see you guys are wearing, I see you guys are getting issued Arcadias. We're like, Fuck no, we had to buy these. He's like, what? We get those issued. We're like, no, you don't. There's no way they're issuing these boots to you. He's like, no, we get them issued. And when they look like that, we can just dermo them. What? He's like, yeah. Have all your instructors give me their boots. And I'll take them down and dermo them and bring you guys new boots. I'm like, you're full of shit. There's no way you're bringing back, you know, a thousand dollars worth of boots. He goes, comes back, gives us a gives us a bag full of brand new boots. He's like, here's all your boots. And he's like, and here's all your old boots. I was going to dermo them, but then, you know, we can take whatever we want out of dermo. And I figured you guys might want your old boots back. And he brought us our old boots back. So, and that was in the 90s. The shit that they, the shit that they cycle through now, again, if you're, if you're trying to, if you're trying to be Delta Force, don't try, okay? The guys shoot a million rounds a year. They... They have no want for money or gear. Um, whatever they whatever they want, they get. 
Um, same, you know, dev group. Even I'm sure that the I'm sure that the seals down at Coronado. They don't get the same caviar. It's bottom shelf caviar, <laughs> but it's still caviar. Okay. They don't get the same caviar, but it's still caviar. So, I mean, don't try and don't try and compete with those guys because the, the truth of the matter is, I mean, you could you could buy every piece of kit that those guys are running. You can go out to the range with Grand Thumb and shoot every single day. If Dev Group or Delta show up at your door, you're going to be in your underwear, sucking your thumb, and there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. Nothing. It's just, it's going to be over for you. Those guys are professionals. That's all they do. That's the, that's the problem with the current, you know, with the current trends in the gun industry. It's like, even Grand Thumb, that's all he does. So when you watch his video and you're like, God damn, he shoots so fast and he's, he just does all this cool shit. It's all he does. If you want to give up your job, isn't whatever he, you're doing. Isn't he a pararescue man uh, or CCT he, guy? I think he's CCT with the Air Force. Um, if you want to give up your job and, and, and I don't think he's doing that anymore. I think he's full-time, full-time. social because it's, it's big money. Um, if you want to give up your job and you want to be a, a ninja, go ahead. But again, even if you have the same exact training as let's, let's say you are former Delta guy and Delta shows up at your door, you're going to have a little bit of advantage, but you also know. I would that think that dude would have fucking. Yeah, but I, you and... also know that there's another 90 guys outside that door that are just going to keep coming until you are fucking mush and mash. So that's that's what you don't see, right? So when you're watching Tyler Gray's Navy SEALs, awesome show. Tyler, awesome dude. But you don't see the support that comes oh, with yeah. that. You don't, you don't see the fucking, the sister platoon and all yeah. the other fucking on target. Like, right, they're, they're literally there in case. There was... I'm probably going to say this wrong and you can correct me in the things down below if you're, if you're into that, but I don't pay attention to what seals do, but there was, I believe six additional helicopters at the bin Laden raid full of Rangers, just waiting for some shit to go bad. I mean, if, if, if it would have went South and the, and the seals would have been gotten in a tight spot, those other helicopters would have hit the dirt and they would have been bad for everybody on the ground. There's always, there's, the trailer platoon is always bigger than the than the actual door kickers, even for the Marine Corps. You know they use a rifle they use a rifle platoon to support seventeen or is it seventeen? It's probably more now, but like twenty force guys. There's another forty dudes outside just waiting, and that's the Marine Corps. And we don't we don't even have, they didn't even have yeah they, we don't put manpower we don't use manpower lightly. I mean, to give you an example, when I was in uh, Huseba, the Army had a brigade up there. The Marine Corps was like. Cool. We have a rifle company. And they put a rifle company in an army brigade area. How so, many is a brigade? It's a lot. It's b- brigades bigger than battalions. So it comes with it comes with uh, Apaches, tanks. It's like a So it's how many almost, humans do you think that is? I don't know. Guess five thousand? Maybe. What's a rifle company? Forty? Wait, rifle company. Four platoons. That that happens a lot of places though. Yeah. Like you'll have some other branch completely shoot the shit out of some place. And still not accomplish the mission, and then fucking twenty four Marines show up. Well, we just we do things so much differently. Like they had a they had a uh, an area above us that was like three times as big as uh, Huseba's area, and they had an armored. Um, I can't think of the name of the unit, but they had an armored unit up there. But they were show the army was so short staffed. That they were having not Bradleys. What's the other one? Strikers. Strikers. They were having strikers run through these villages and run through these areas with just two dudes in them, and it was the presence of the striker. Just show of force. Yeah, just kind of show force. Hey, we're here, but that don't do anything. Like, you really got to put boots on the one, ground. One striker had troops in it, and the other yeah. were just there to they look like the look convoy. Like the convoy. So. Anyways, we've gone way off topic, yeah, haven't we? I got to piss. Yeah, we got to put some piss tubes in this John's, place. Like, John's I need a piss. PVC pipe that goes. We to haven't the even outside. we haven't even talked about the Christmas special, the uh, sweaty chocolate balls. Oh shit! Amanda's doing uh, sweaty yeah. chocolate balls for everyone this Christmas. You can get them with sprinkles. There's a uh, vanilla flavor. Um, so be on the lookout for the sweaty balls that are going to be coming out this Christmas. Are we? I didn't know we were back on. Are we back on? Are we back on? You're back on. We're yeah. back on the air. All right. It, uh, because because the the CAG dudes are busy doing CAG stuff. 
That is true. Well, that's true. There's there's retired ones though. I mean, Larry, look at Larry. He's out there. Yeah, but that he, Larry wasn't with CAG. Larry was with like yeah, Larry, Chuck Norris. He was with Chuck Norris. I believe there's a photo of Larry on the motorcycle with the rockets on it. I'm sure there is. Yeah, I believe there is. I'm sure there is. So, okay, so mop gear. Mop gear. Do you think they made you guys? How often did you train with mop gear? Okay, it's a it's a dangerous secret that the only time you the only time you train the only time you train in mop gear is if you get randomly selected to go through the gas chamber, then you have to do a refresher course, which may be once a year, Um, or if you are going into some theater where they believe that there's uh, some sort of chemical, a possibility of a chemical attack, then you train in it every day. But meaning I probably only put mop gear on, I'll bet in my career I put mop gear on in a, in a strictly training environment, like three times. And then when we were getting ready to go over for the first Gulf War, they really thought Saddam was going to use some chemical weapons. So that training cycle was every day. Like we went in fucking road marches, all full mop gear and your gas mask fills up with fucking sweat. And we were using M17s back then. And when they really, really were like, Hey, you guys are going to go over to the desert. And we really, really think he's going to use chemical weapons. They tested all of our equipment. So like they brought in and none of it, (laughs) they brought in this fucking truck and they're like, Hey, we're going to test all your gas masks to make sure they seal. Right. And they're like, um, none of these gas masks work. They're all fucked up. You have to get rid of every single, like literally every gas mask we got rid. Like we're out there with, I was on a detail with a ax cutting M17 masks. We used to <laughs> see them. We would see them in bins at Dermo and they'd cut the, the cut uh, the masks. pockets. And so I'm, I'm out there scavenging all the parts because I actually had an extra M17 mask. So I'm, I'm taking all the parts off and shit. And the, the clerk, the guy that's doing the detail is like, what are you doing? He's like, I don't know. You just might, you never know when you're going to need a little extra. And that's when the M40, I believe we got M forties. The first M forties came in after that. But the problem with gas masks is back in the nineties, they made you carry your gas mask everywhere. And your gas mask is like this useless piece of kit that you never use. And it ends up just being a pillow. And so you don't know how many other guys have used that gas mask as a pillow. And it's just, it's, it's not going to be the life saving piece of equipment that you think it is at the time of need. So they, whenever there's a, whenever there's a a scare in the military, as far as chemical weapons, or it doesn't matter what it is. That's when they, that's when they're actually going, Oh, we need to check everybody's shit to make sure it actually works. So you say it's a useless piece of gear. Is that because you don't have the full suit with it? You need all the other bullshit to go with it? Well, now, the crazy thing now is we have civilians. It used to be you had an NBC. um, You had a a whole section. So there was a whole platoon that just ran NBC equipment, right? So they had all all the suits, all the filters. They had all the shit. And they they knew how to do what was necessary as far as they knew how to do decontamination. They knew how to do all that. Well, now... The military is so reliant on contractors that it's civilians that run all that. So you can't even like if like if let's say I my platoon I'm the platoon sergeant I'm like hey you know what we're gonna do we're just gonna go over NBC procedures. I can't go to supply and get the suit and be like let's do an exchange. The guys the civilians that run that are like you know how much these motherfuckers cost you ain't touching these. So. The, even the training is not really there. So when we're talking about the military just bought 200 and some odd million radiation tablets. Potassium at it. Yeah, they did that because they're never ready for the real stuff. Like they're not, nobody's training for nuclear war. It's like all the, when people talk about EMP, right? Everybody's like, oh my God, EMP, EMP. I need to shield this. I need to shield that. It's not even a TTP for the military. Like it's not a TTP. They're not, there's nobody in the military that's going, Hey, is that is that equipment shielded for EMP, or how do we make sure that this tank is going to keep running if there's a, it's not even a TTP? What is TTP? Meaning it's a training training procedure and some I don't know. You okay. Hit me in the comments, but it's a it's there. It's it's how we decide what we're going to train for. So it's it's not like people think like you know when when you think of the Marine Corps or you think of the 
any, well, we'll just use the Marine Corps, for example. Uh, infantry battalion really doesn't shoot that many, that much ammo. Like they don't, we're not out on the, they're not ninjas. We're not out on the range shooting all the time. They're doing a lot more shooting now, which is kind of neat because they're doing more aggressive shooting than what they used to do. Shoot and move, communicate. Yeah, but they're not, they're really, they're still, they still have the same ammo allocation. So it's not really getting, they're not shooting, moving and communicating like you think. It's mostly sexual harassment videos. It's mostly dental stand downs. It's mostly, their military guys are mostly doing things that don't have anything to do with the fight. Until they think there's going to be a fight, and then they go, "We got to train," and everybody starts doing all this kind of weird, whatever the new, the new training is. Like, um, so NBC, they're not ready for it. Okay, so <laughs> the reason no reason I brought that up is because you have just the the talk everywhere right now is you can't you can't turn on YouTube and not see nuclear war this and yeah. how to. You know, you need to be subsurface, even if there's not a roof on the structure, shielding from the earth, berms of dirt, uh, gas mm. mass. Everybody's every, There's some bitching-looking gas mass out right now. Do you know what most people don't understand about that? Because when we're talking about surviving a nuclear war, um, we're talking about the only time nuclear war has happened, and that is the end of World War II. And we're talking about a country that dropped two nuclear weapons on another country. Yes, there is a possibility of surviving. There's a possibility that if you jump behind a, a cinder block wall at the right time or you're in your basement eating ice cream, that you're going to survive that blast at a certain radius, right? Not total nuclear war. Not total nuclear war. Not Russians. If the United States and Russia go toe-to-toe and we start throwing fucking missiles... We have 1,300 missiles that are ready to go right this fucking second. There's, there's nowhere to hide. There's not, the, I mean, the, just the radiation, just the radiation cloud, the radiation, the dust from the radiation that's going to go up in the upper atmosphere is going to be so deadly that there, you just, what are you going to do? Hide in your basement? I mean, yes, if you have the right, if, if you are Tom Cruise and you have your bunker and you're, 15 Navy, former Navy SEALs that are protecting your bunker, you can survive nuclear holocaust. But to what end? When you come out, there's going to be nothing. The, 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 radiation, the radiation and the dust that is going to be in the atmosphere is going to kill everything. There's not going to be any cows. You're not going to come out. There's going to be flowers. There's going to be nothing. Everything is going to be dead. What are you going to do? You're going to plant your corn? Your corn's so, not going to grow in radioactive soil. So do you not have a gas mask? Oh, fuck, I got 10. I got seen, 10. So Mira, Mira I got gas mask. Mop suits, I got the whole shit. There's a company, Mira, that's come out and very available to the civilian mm-hmm. market. They've got a papper and fucking puffer systems. Papper's, pressurized, the, way, papper's the way to go, so, except you need power. No, 123s. And they have rechargeable 123s. Yeah, but I, again, you still need sure. power in the long run. So it's long a positive long, pressure papper's system. The way to go. Positive pressure system, you guys that don't know. So it, if you were to break the seal, it's always got a little bit of pssst to it. So nothing can accidentally come into your faceplate. And that's it's kind of like there's a faceplate, and then there's the system, and then the filters are actually on the plate. And you can get front-mounted, back-mounted, mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff. Um, no, but the big thing about a PAP or two is it, it, it takes this it, you work with your facial off hair. of your face. No, well, I mean, it, it, takes your, it takes your filters off your face and puts them somewhere else. So it's much easier to shoot with a with a papper. And you're running dual filters typically on yeah, it. Yeah, dual filters. Um, but it has the pressure, so it's easier to breathe through it. Um, and they've got voice emitters for them and drinking tubes and all kinds of shit. But so there, I'm, I'm in all these prepper groups, right, right. On, on Facebook. And, there, and it's always the question, you know, I got a gas mask, I got a gas mask. But it's never, and I'm always curious, right? I click on his name to see, I wonder what the gas mask guy looks like. And he's usually large. And he probably can't walk a mile, much less in a gas mask. So it's it's always just the, I, I, it's always baffling to see and, and there's usually not an unlimited amount of funds, right? It's, it's yeah. the same guys that are posting, like, I have an extra $25. What prep should I buy this week? And you chose gas mask? Like, gas mask was your, was your pick? 
I mean, that, that really should be your last pick. So, because there's a lot of stuff that goes. There's a lot of stuff that goes with that. I mean, first off, you have to decide why you're buying a gas mask. Are you buying it because you're going up to Seattle this weekend and you're going to get in a fight with the Proud Boys and throw fireworks back and forth and maybe get CS by the police? If that's why you're buying it, it's a good investment. If you're buying it because you think there's going to be nuclear war with Russia, even if it's limited, right? Even if it's limited, maybe we fire, they fire five at us and we fire 10 at them and they're like, fuck it, we're not going to do it anymore. Even if it's limited, the gas mask is a small portion of what you need. There's other equipment that you have to have. And if it gets ridiculous, like the Russians have a, the Russians have a blood agent. They have an agent that they can introduce into the battlefield that will eat through your filter in seven minutes. That means if you don't get out of that fucking space in seven minutes, you're done. Now, the truth of, from a, from a military perspective, and this is why I think they don't really train as much as they do as they should. Because we, we don't talk, want them to realize how fucked they are. No, from a military perspective is um, mop suits and gas masks are not for the front light troops. Right. Mop suits and gas masks are for the people who come behind the front light troops because the the cocktails and the shit that they use now, it's not mustard gas. I mean, they can still use mustard gas, but the stuff that they use now is you, you just don't have enough time and space to go mop level up. You're, you're just, if you're out on the front lines and the Russians decide to shoot chemical weapons at you, you guys are dead. It's the follow-on forces who are going to show up in the mop suits and be like, "Oh, hey, this M4 is still cool. Let me have it." It's so, not. It's not for the. It's not. For, that's like like in the sniper platoon when when it, when it used to be called stay. We would never take. We would never take our our chem any of that stuff with us because we knew that we were the fucking speed bump for the battalion. The battalion is hoping that if uh, the battalion's hoping if Saddam Hussein would have fucking hit us with mustard gas, we'd have went. <coughs> Mustard get and that and then they would have been like, "Hey, snipers, save the day! Everybody, put your fucking mop suits on." You know what I'm saying? It's not, right. it's not for the guys that are out front. So back to like the the light gear, right? We we capture their attention with the crazy, whatever. Uh-huh. We entertain them, right? Yeah. And then we weave a story as to why they want this, right? We show them something so that they have an application for the cool thing, even though they yeah. don't have the helicopter dropping them off with the right. super light gear. And that's I think that a lot of the gas mask companies have kind of done that, right? I'm like, gas masks. I, you know I like gas masks. Yeah. I've got 100 gas masks. But I mean, these, I'm not saying don't buy one. Yeah, they look really cool hanging on your wall, and they look even cooler if you put them on a baby doll. Um, but again, if you don't take care of them and you don't service them, they're just, they're just a hindrance. Right. So the application of those, though, like you are someplace. Let's say EMP. Let's say EMP hit, EMP, right? So right, your car EMP dies, car and you dies. need to drive home, and... The city is on fire, and there's all kinds of ash coming down. You could wear this gas mask and keep those ash from going in your lungs. They even make a faceplate, right? Yeah. So you can wear goggles separate, have a separate piece, goggles and a faceplate. So now I'm back to I should buy this gas mask. I really, what it comes down to is I want to buy the gas mask, right? But why do I need the gas mask? Well, I don't, but I might need it because of fires. I could use it for forest Well, fires. not really, because um, the particulates and the, the particulates that are in the like if you're thinking forest fire, the particulates in the forest fire are big enough to where eventually it's going to choke that mask off. Correct. So you is can, it really for forest fire? I mean, I you should carry, be, you, this, carry, is, this is how you should. In my, in my large Alice. Pack. This should, how you should look at it. You're driving down the freeway. EMP hits. You get your dangler and you get out of the truck. You got to make it back to the shop on the way to the shop. You see a crackhead run across the street on fire. You look, his meth lab is blown up. Boom, you put the gas mask on. You don't have to worry about any of them toxic chemicals. Through the woods, you're home. Got it. Zombie. I mean, uh, zombies. You know, like that. Or, I mean, zombies. you know, the, the reality is, and some people may have forgotten this, but a religious zealot, I hate to use religious zealot, but I he was a religious I don't think zealot. He was. Um, religious zealot in China, or not China, sorry, Japan. Okay, we're talking about different people. Different people. Uh, released sarin gas in the, in the subway. Now, if you were rocking your side dangler pouch with your gas mask in it, you could have threw that on, saved the day, went around and drug people out of the way or did whatever. You can't really do anything with that unless you got an antidote. But anyways, 
it would have you would have looked cool. But you, I my guess is the minute you stepped out of the subway, the Japanese police would have beat you to a pulp because they would have thought it was you that was doing it because you were the only one with a gas mask on. So you're pointing the finger right. It's like a red light. Boop boop. So I don't know. That would work. Did you ever have voice emitters on your gas? Oh uh, yeah, I got. I got. I mean, don't get again. Did you I'm go not like? Saying, don't buy the shit. I'm your father. I've got all the shit because the reality is when the world goes to hell in a handbasket, I want to try and survive. Um, realistically, is that going to happen? It just depends on how many, it just depends on how many weapons hit Clarksville. Um, you think cause they will that is hit? the, you oh, think, you hun- think home of the 101st airborne? Hell yeah. So they're going to blow the shit out of nuclear Clarksville. Nuclear missile hits Clarksville? It, well, it's targeted. It's, it, 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 100% is targeted. The question is because we are, we're kind of a unique position is the 101st airborne is not a, I would it's not going to be a priority target. So it's not going to be first. It's not going to be first round. Um, first round. It's not going to be the first thing that they're going to hit. The, the reality is us and the Russians, most of our tactical missiles are slated for other tactical missiles. So they know where all ours are parked. We know where all theirs are parked. So airfields, airfields that are close to, uh, so if you have a, if you have a, Air Force Base that has a B-1 bomber, targeted. You're on the list. You're on the fucking list. Um, all North Dakota, South Dakota, hey, it's bitching that you guys live way out in the middle of nowhere. But there are 320 ICBM sites out there. The Russians are going to nuke the fuck out of that place. Elko, Nevada, you're getting wiped off the face of the planet. Um, so the question is, at which point do our interceptors... So, you know, the reality is when, when somebody says 1,300 missiles... They're not all going to make it. I mean, we are going to shoot missiles down. It's it's going to happen. How well they I mean, say? If it's like anything else that the government well, they they runs. say that even now, even now they say they they can they can only take out a missile fifty percent of the time. So, but even if ten percent, the 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 truth is the first targets, whatever the first targets are, those are gone. So so DC, where so Los where Angeles, we are, for instance, right here, where we are. Clarksville gets hit. Clarksville gets hit. How much time until that affects us? We're downhill from them. Like all that shit's gonna roll down. No, no, it, uh, it's it's all about wind patterns. Okay, so you, I mean, I I don't know as the crow flies from Camden. You're sitting a lot better than I am. So to get to Cam, to get to Clarksville, we go right past your place. Yeah, you're sitting a lot better than I am, but I am outside. But like, you are on the other side of the hill. I am out, but I'm also. I am outside of what they call the immediate threat. So where everything just gets p- destroyed. So I'm outside of that. But what is but that? Not, That's what, far. five miles, ten miles? Yeah, it's like five miles. That um, everything's, everything's fucking ash. Yeah, you're dead. So, but that that also that also requires a perfect hit by the Russians. And, you know, they're, they're really, we're just going to be throwing, at that point, we're just going to be throwing spears wherever the spears land. I mean, the way things are looking in Ukraine right now, do we believe that the Russia, I mean, you have a, a vast amount of people that think that nuclear weapons don't even exist for real. How can you? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Go ahead and YouTube that because there's there's plenty of evidence. But uh, the well, what they might be talking about is tactical battlefield nukes. Um, in the '90s or in the '80s, late '80s, when we did the first treaty. The Russians destroyed all their tactical battlefield nukes. In order, f- in order to keep, in order to keep the ICBMs that could actually hit the United States, all the, all the low-level tactical stuff disappeared. It's gone. They don't have. I mean, they may have hid some. Well, it means terrorists they, have it. That means they sold it. To they don't really have the Russians. Don't really have like it's like we used to have a Davy Crockett. You could fire a fucking nuclear weapon off of a jeep through a recoilless rifle. Well. Yeah, we used to. We don't have those fucking things anymore. Um, they're gone. Because it just doesn't... Everybody... Here's the reality. In the 1980s, under Reagan, everybody understood mutual assured destruction. I don't need a nuclear weapon that you know blows up a battalion area where the Marines land on the beach, I drop a nuke, haha, you guys are all dead. I don't need that. Because I have... ICBM missiles that will destroy every city in your country. So 
a tactical nuke doesn't do you anything because everybody understands that if you use a tactical nuke in a battlefield scenario like we did in Japan, that the response is total annihilation. The Russians aren't going to, if let's say they drop, let's say they used a bomb in Ukraine. Like they, they're just like, Oh shit, we're losing. We're going to use a bomb. They know that the response is bombs from us. Do you think that's, you think that is has to be, it has to be the response because if we do not respond, they're just going to use more tactical nuclear weapons and Europe's not going to allow them. I mean, shit, Poland right now is frothing at the bit to get in this war. They are ready. They are frothing at the bit to go toe to toe with the Russians, which is weird. Poland, because you know, didn't work out very well in World War II for you. But they're frothing at the bit, and we have systems in Poland. That's the thing. You know, the, the thing about this whole Ukraine thing. I know you don't understand this, but we are one hundred percent the bad guys. Putin is not. I would agree with that. We're 100% the bad guys on this. He is, when they decided to shut down the, when they decided to shut down the Soviet Union, they're like, hey, we're going to, when, uh, what was his, Khrush, not Khrushchev, uh, I can't think of his name, the dude with the crazy ass. Gorbachev. Gorbachev. When they decided to make the deal to, to open up, to take down the wall, as it were, with Reagan. With David the, Hasselhoff. The, yeah, David Hasselhoff. He's probably the reason why it happened. Um, the negotiators specifically told Gorbachev, they're like, hey, guess what? If you break up the Soviet Union, we don't need NATO anymore. We're not going to expand NATO. And so Gorbachev's like, okay, if you don't expand NATO, we'll let this shit happen. Gorbachev was like, all right, pull the guards back. Berlin Wall comes down. The negotiators get in their plane. They fly back to the United States and like, hey, you know, we did tell them we wouldn't expand NATO. Everybody in the room laughed at him course we're going to expand nato i mean if if you if you look at if you look at the position that putin is in he really has no choice we keep adding countries to nato he is surrounded by countries that consider him the enemy why would you not think that the goal is to destroy the soviet or russia of course that you would think that that would be the goal and it it is the goal iran russia and china have to fall in order for the world to be controlled by one government. Iran is getting ready to fall. If you haven't been paying attention, they are in total turmoil right now with the riots there. We're depleting Russia as best we can, and we are currently poking China with a finger, saying, go ahead and try and take Taiwan and see what happens. What do you think happens uh, if they try to take Taiwan? This is what I think happens. I think the Taiwan military gets punched real hard in the face, but they do a much more damage to the Chinese initial assault. It, it all boils down to this. If China does not get a foothold immediately, like if they don't get a foothold into Taiwan immediately, we win. The, we're going to send, we're going to send a carrier task group. We're going to send a carrier task group. Well, we're going to, we're going to send five carrier task groups over there. The first, unfortunately, the first carrier task group is going to end up with a tactical nuclear weapon that is going to wipe that carrier task group off the face of the planet. And then we are going to go, thanks for the sacrifice, no holds bar, and we're going to wipe the... China doesn't have the capability. They just don't... Nobody has the capability. Everybody, you know, the Department of Defense wants you to believe that all these boogeymen live all around the world and they just have this technology. They're, get, they're getting close. They're, they almost have a stealth fighter, or they have a stealth fighter. The, the capability, they're always chasing us. The Chinese are always chasing us. Yes. So that we can sell arms? Yeah, so we can sell arms. Like It's like everybody was flipping out about uh, China having an aircraft carrier. They have a 80-year-old Russian converted aircraft carrier. Which almost sank, I thought. Yeah, caught on fire. One. They have one. We have ten. <laughs> we have ten. You can't be like, you can't be serious and saying, and you know, like they say, Oh, China has the the largest navy in the world now. Yes, if you if you count canoes, yes, they have the largest world in the navy. But if you talk about actual firepower, they don't have the capability. Our Aegis class cruisers outshine anything that they have, and we've given those to the Japanese. And the Japanese would be more than happy to sink Chinese ships on our behalf. I mean, it's it's a 
So what do you think happens? What are we going to have? Are you going to see? Are we going to see a nuclear war in our lifetime? I don't think so. So I think I I think I think Putin has I think Putin is going to get backed into a corner and he's going to he's going to he's going to press the button. He's going to he's going to be like pressing the button and he's going to look at his guy and his guy's going to go like this. He's going to shrug his shoulders and then there's going to be a bunch of generals that got really big paychecks from the Pentagon. They're going to be like Russian generals. Yes, they're going to be like we get to be in charge now, right? And the CIA is going to go, "Of course you do." Winking his eye. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't I think I mean Putin doesn't have a choice. He, he's if he gets if this push that he's going to do uh this this uh this winter, he's going to do a winter push once the ground is frozen. That's why he just mobilized 300,000 troops. If that doesn't come to fruition for him, if like Belarus wants to join in the fight. If Belarus joins in the fight, I see Poland jumping in the fight. If Poland jumps in the fight, We're in the fight. All our all our military guys are in Poland. <laughs> isn't, our, isn't our military very downgraded right now? It, it is to a certain extent because um, you know they're they're worried more worried about wokeism. But again, the 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 problem that play that pl- the problem that the Chinese and the Russians have is if you look at our if you look at our military and you're like God, they're doing all this woke shit. It's so much worse in those countries like the chinese had the one you know the one child policy and what that what that did was it created a whole generation which is the generation that the military armed forces right now that was 100 percent spoiled beyond belief the chinese cannot get those troops to do what they want to do because they're just they their whole lives they were told they were special and they were perfect and and so they act like that so they have a they have a, a serious troop problem that is why China got rid of the one-child policy, and they want people to have more children so they can get people in the military who aren't spoiled brats. Um, I mean, we're we're close to that, and I think the policies that we've been putting forward as far as all this woke and gender equality and all that, I am sure that all that is coming out of China because China was like, oh, shit, it really fucked us up. Let's see if we can fuck the America up with it. But there's still, there's still so many corn-fed... Uh, Americans in the military and you know, truth of the matter is our technology is so much better than everybody else's. So do you think we'll see a draft? No, uh-uh. we won't see a draft. So for the, for the normal person listening, our customer base, our audience doesn't need to worry about nuclear war. It's just a distraction keeping you from doing I, things I that you can actually do something about. And if you're worried up all night about your kids getting drafted, Put your time and energy into your family something else, yeah. and do something that you have something to show for it. The one thing that we can all agree on, I think, is that there is an attack on the U.S. food system, no matter how you look at it, whether it's cost of diesel or fertilizer or whatever it is. Go to the grocery store right now and look at what $100 bought you two years ago, three years ago, compared to right now, right? Go to the grocery store. There are things in the grocery store that you or your wife or your grandmother, mom, sometime in your life, knew that they could every week go to the grocery store and buy, and those things aren't there anymore. There's replacements for them. The ingredients are different. Like, I don't remember what it was. Sauce, I think some sausages, right? Amanda cooks breakfast for everybody here, and the sausages are always different. I'm like, man, them sausages you got, something's wrong with them. They're not as good. And she's like, this is the seventh brand in the last 90 days. I try to buy the same thing, but they're not the same thing. The ingredients, everything's askew. So if we can agree that everything is askew, would you be better off having some food production of your own so that you have some kind of control over, right? During World War II, there were, and you can see them, they're on YouTube, the the TV advertisements are there, the magazine articles are there. There was no homeowners association telling you you can't have chickens. Everybody can get rabbits, chickens, a little bit of a garden. I mean, just do something because it's momentum. And when you do something, it becomes easier to do more things. I think we, I think uh, what people should learn from the pandemic and not the current political crisis is you just need to be more self-sufficient. You need to be more self-sufficient. And if that's a victory garden or whatever, you need to be more self-sufficient that the truth of the matter is they created, this is a created chaos. Um, and it's a, it's an employment shortage. No matter what they say, that is why, 
prices of everything are going through the roof is because it costs more to make the things post pandemic because people are not going back to work. Now, I think it's baby boomers. I think that, I mean, you, you think back, think back before the pandemic, when you went into McDonald's, there was a 65 year old in that McDonald's working the cash register. When you went to a restaurant, there was, there were, there were baby boomers, old baby boomers that were in industries filling all these slots, whether it's hostesses or, or McDonald's, or even you go to Walmart, the cashiers, you had all these baby boomers that were filling these slots. And then we threw COVID at them. You think they retired or expired? I think you have a bit of both. I think they retired and expired. Uh, um, why would you, you know, if you, let's say you were, you know, you're making $13 an hour or whatever it is. I don't know what it is. $9 an hour at McDonald's. And you were interacting with people every day. And there was a possibility that you were going to interact with somebody that was going to give you a respiratory virus that would kill you. Why the hell would you go to work at McDonald's for $9 an hour? You wouldn't. Well, Baby boomers have left the market, so they're they're not working anymore. And Gen Z or whatever Gen it is now that should be working at McDonald's, these motherfuckers aren't going to work. They're in their mom's basement. They're watching YouTube. They're playing video games. And so it's left this big, huge gap to where we have lost. I mean, when you think about it, if you just think about the structure of the United States, okay? If you, John, you are the CEO of McDonald's. When you started opening franchises in the United States, you were opening stores at a rate that serviced the baby boomers, the biggest generation this country's ever produced, meaning population. So those stores, you had, I don't know, we're just going to say 100, let's say you had 100 McDonald's stores that you opened to service the baby boomers. The baby boomers are dying off, and the generations, the generations after the baby boomers do not have as many children as the baby boomers and the generations before. So even just looking at it that way, you can't have a hundred McDonald's anymore. You have to, you have to shut stores down in order to stay with the population because the population is no longer big enough to support those stores or work in those stores. And I think that's across the board. I think when we, I think COVID, the whole thing about COVID was to fucking take baby boomers out of the, out of the, the whole cycle, get them out of the workplace and I don't think they understood what that meant as far as when things go back to normal. Because they basically, baby boomers were doing the work. And the generation, the, the generations under that, they were like, you don't have to work at McDonald's. It's beneath you. Blah, blah, blah. You can be anything you want to be, even though you probably should be working. I mean, everybody should have worked at McDonald's at least once. Um, but I think that's what it is. I think that the baby boomers, they're dying. They got COVID. They're scared. Why would you go back to work? I mean, you think about that. Think about Amazon, right? Amazon built trailer parks at their hubs so baby boomers would go there in the wintertime and work at their hubs. I bet you those trailer parks are fucking empty. Because why Why would you expose yourself? If I, if I told you, you know, if I told you, John, I said, John, look. If you go out in public, there's a solid chance that somebody is going to give you a, a disease that is going to fucking kill you. You're going to limit where you go. You're not just going to be fucking going to the mall and being like, well, I'm going to go to work anyways. Not if you work with 50 people, because you know, especially if you're going to McDonald's, you're working with a bunch of booger eating booger eaters and they don't care. They don't wash their hands. They don't, do, you know. Sorry, McDonald's, I don't mean that your employees don't have healthy workplace environments. But again, you should go check some of your stores sometimes. Um, so why would you go back to work? That's the, there's an insurance guy, and he was talking about Wall Street. They were just talking about this. I just saw this the other day. They were talking about Wall Street. Wall Street, was, Wall Street corporations were the first ones to implement vaccines. They did it before the government made it mandatory. And the, 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 the people who are dying in that group is higher than any other group. So because why, of the, because okay. of the, whether it's the vaccine, whether, whatever it is, they're dying at a higher rate in that group. So why would you go? Like if you survived it, like if, you know, if you survived 
a near death incident or you believe because you're old, why would you go back to work? I mean, there's no reason to. And nobody's filling those spots and because nobody's filling those spots. Companies are f- talking about, they don't have enough employees and that's why things cost more. Well, that's, that was manufactured. We created this. We created this whole thing. It's not, there's not less bicycle shops. There's not less Toys R Us. If you could say anything, I mean, there is less Toys R Us. Sorry, Toys R Us. I loved you, Jeffrey Giraffe. Um, if you could say anything, we have too much. There's there's too many McDonald's. There's too many malls. There's too many to support the population that doesn't do shit. Yeah, Walmart's closing stores. People are starting, they're starting to close down. They say that during COVID, 50% of restaurants went out of business and never came back. And you're starting to see it. Like you used to just not, because you didn't, we didn't go to the restaurants, right? But now the signs are falling down or being taken down or they're literally, you drive through Jackson, they're literally removing buildings. There's but think just about empty lots there. Think about what I said before about too many people at the table, right? Yeah. Too many people at the table. So, so do you think Brandel's got a, Brandel's got a, we'll just, I'll just say Brandel has come up with a new hamburger, the Whataburger hamburger that everybody loves, and he's got 20 stores. He's making good money. COVID happens. His store's closed because the government says he can't have his place of business is open. McDonald's stays open. Why? Because McDonald's has, you know, I don't even know. It's got to be crazy. It's got to be so it's a population. 20,000 locations. <laughs> population too high? No, population is not too high. Got we're it. suffering. So, so we're not going to war to send people so that we can reduce population. Well, there's 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 people in our there's because every there's time you Uber. hear every time you hear Gates talk or any of well, those guys, the reason, they talk about population. Again, Bill Gates is not your friend. No. When Bill Gates talks about reduction of population, what he's ta- what he's actually talking about is people around his table. He doesn't want to share his table. There's too many millionaires. There's too many people that are billionaires. And he doesn't want to share that table with those people. And so uh, how do you do that? You do that by reducing the population, by getting rid of, by getting rid of millionaires and keeping your servants. As, as long as they'll eat crickets, he's fine with it. He's not your less, friend. Less people that's why he That's why he wants you to eat fake meat. Because do you honestly think Bill Gates is going to be eating artificial meat? No, he's going to be eating cow. He's going to be eating cow with the rest of the millionaires. He does not look very healthy. But yeah, he's still going to be eating cheeseburgers. He's not going to eat soy meat. Guaranteed, he won't eat it. Or crickets. Or crickets. So that's the because, cricket eaters. The, so the cricket eaters are going to survive. That's what because they want money's to... not created; it's taken, right? Yeah. So for him to have more money, he has to take it away from other people who don't want to give it to him. Well, it, it, the reality is, Bill Gates needs to. He, uh, I'm, I'm using. Sorry, Bill. I'm using you as a colloquial to represent all um, uber rich, insidious, insidious uber rich. He, they need the labor of others to sustain their life, right? He can't, like, the, the reality is Bill, you know, Bill Gates or Elon Musk or Bezos, they literally don't need to do anything. Like, if they wanted to tomorrow, they could just be like, okay, I'm just going to live on my island and eat cheeseburgers and, and, and no one would, it wouldn't affect anybody. But they have to feed that ego. And in order to feed that ego, they need the labor of others. And they don't want the labor of millionaires because those millionaires are looking at Bill Gates going, well, they're lazy millionaires. Oh most boy. of those, most gonna, of those millionaires are yeah. not self-made. Well, I mean, well, that's not technically true. We make, we make a lot of millionaires in the United States. But what I'm saying is when you have a bunch of people sitting at the table, it's like game of Thrones. There's always somebody that wants your chair. Like there's, you know, you, you think about Elon and how Elon has gone against the grain when it comes to other billionaires and the, you know, the little fight that him and, and him and the gates are in there's always somebody that wants your throne so the only way to maintain your throne is to make sure that that table is really small the people who get to come in make sure that table is really small so the cricket eaters and the soy meat eaters they're going to be fine as long as they get out on the field and tend to bill gates's cows we're going back to fiefdoms it's going to be you know billionaire kings who are going to rule over a large swath of land and you are going to feel privileged that he lets you sleep in a house made out of pallets and take care of his prized chickens that you don't get to eat by the way, like the gameskeeper. Yeah. You don't get to eat 
You don't get to eat any of that shit. You'll be eating cricket meal um, because that's what Bill wants you to do. So, I mean, that's where we're going. So how long till people start pulling them out and eating them? I don't know. It, it, the issue is, the issue is the. Uh, I guess as long as the cricket protein is uh, um, sweet, well, we've they'll made, be appeased. I, we have the the issue boils down to this: is that the that the people that you would expect to step in and be like, "Hey, this is bullshit," they're super comfortable. They've made us super super comfortable. So when we say, "Well," I know that what I know that what Joe Biden did with the Saudis was an impeachable offense, and we should be losing our shit about it. Yeah, I don't want to get involved. I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to eat my cocoa pebbles, and I'm not going to get involved in that because I don't care about what happens in Washington. And that's that's the only reason that this this administration and this whole woke process has been able to succeed is because no one has stood up to it. Like no one, like they. They love to talk about January 6th. So Only everybody... one person was killed at January 6th, and that was a protester. The FBI arrested nobody with guns. That is a peaceful protest. Are you talking about Ashley Babbitt? Yep. She was shot by a... She was shot by a congressional security guard, and she was actually standing next to three police officers when she was shot. If I would have been one of those police officers, I promise you I would have returned fire because... And, it, and, I, and there was one of those guys that actually got his rifle and was like, I'm going to shoot you, motherfucker. And he was like, oh, shit, that's a congressional. So there was no reason for him to shoot Babbitt whatsoever. So, that I mean, again, I don't want to get into politics of January 6th. <coughs> it was a complete setup. Um, and that's what the left is doing right now. Like, all this shit with Donald Trump. Well, that's why they're going to arrest Trump. If, well, Donald. Because they're looking for an uprising. Yeah, all the shit with Donald Trump, the raid on Mar-a-Lago, the they fucking just said they were subpoena, subpoena all, all, that, all that shit, all, all that shit. They're doing it all to try and get a response from the left. They, I mean, the right. They need the right to show up at the Capitol with guns to get in a gunfight with the National Guard, so they can institute martial law, and then we don't have to worry about elections anymore. It's it's all a ploy. It's just a ploy by the left to get a response from. So with the martial right. law, who rounds up the guns? Nobody. No. You know, the, the whole idea, you know, I'll give you an example is Australia. When Australia did their weapons ban, there wasn't nobody knocking on doors. You went and put your rifle in the pile and went home. They didn't go door to door looking for guns. They're not going to do it here in the United States because they'll get their fucking asses handed to them. All they have to do is turn you off. Like the reality is that's all they have to do. They, you know, they do have some pretty, um, they do have some pretty comprehensive lists of people who have firearms. Um, so it's not hard to figure out who those people are. And it's not hard. I mean, just through social media, they can figure out who most of you people are. Um, it's not hard to figure out who you are. And then they'll just turn your life off. That's it. There's going to be some holdouts. Yeah. Like Ruby Ridge or like Waco. There's going to be some holdouts and then they'll send in the fucking SWAT team and, They'll kill everybody and it'll be a big victory for the government, but they don't, they're not going door to door because there's nobody to do it. They don't, the reality is even if they mobilize the entire U S military and said, Hey, we need to round up every gun in this country. We, there's not enough troops. And then, yeah, you're going to get like, could they get all the guns in New York city? No, no. <laughs> could they get all the guns in Los Angeles? Hell they no. Can't, they can't even get all the weapons out. Yeah, hell no, they can't. There's just, there's just there the capability for them to go door to door and get guns is no. When they if they had the opportunity to ban firearms completely in the United States, you would turn them in willingly because you would go to work, and your boss would be like, "Sorry, you don't work here anymore." You would go to your house, you turn the lights on, and the lights would be off. Sorry, you have a firearm. We can't allow you to have a gun. So it's when it comes to that point. When it, when it comes to the point of turning people's lives off, that's why you have a Second Amendment. But the question is, is, is everybody else so comfortable? Like, is everybody else so comfortable that nobody's going to join you on the bridge to fight off the Redcoats? And if nobody's going to join you on the bridge and it's just you, they have three-letter agencies that they have three-letter agencies that are more than willing to froth at the bit and kill U.S. citizens. They've proved it in the past and they'll do it again. So... How does that work? I don't know. I mean, I would think that 
there's a point where Americans are going to actually stand up for their, their civil liberties and tell the government to fuck off. But there's also a point where everybody's comfortable as long as the TV's on and the air conditioning's work and the car runs. Fuck it, I don't need a gun. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Outside of my small little world, right? I don't I don't know. I, I had no hope for America. Like, literally, a couple of years ago, I was like, it's over. There's no reason to fucking be prepared for anything because we're just going to go down the fucking toilet. And then I got on TikTok. I know what you're thinking. TikTok? What the fuck? I got on TikTok, and I know they send the... I know you get what you're looking for, right? So they're using algorithms to make sure you see the things that you're going to keep clicking on so you watch the videos so people can make money, blah, blah, blah. But I was just fucking completely blown away at the amount of young people. When I say young people, I'm talking about, you know, the probably 15 to 18-year-olds that were making videos on TikTok about pro-America. Like, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, what? Who are these? Where are they? Most of them are in Texas, by the way. But I couldn't believe how many of these, these this younger generation that is rebelling against their parents, which we all do, re- rebelling against their liberal parents and talking about how great America is. And so that, that kind of gave me a little bit of hope. I mean, they're still out there. They're joining the military. They're, they're doing good things. I mean, Kyle Rittenhouse, say what you want. He shouldn't have been there. The should, should he really not have been there? Though? Yeah, he really shouldn't have been there. And whoever his, like was his buddy. Ten, ten minutes away. His buddy that was with him. Well, again, once you decide, once. Would you have not been there? Once you decide to go armed, once you make a decision to go armed, it changes the dynamics of everything. And for him to think that he could walk down the street in that environment with an AR-15 and not get a response was the naive part about it. He should like when his, when he high fived his buddy and they're like, yeah, the, the car lot didn't get burned down. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going home. And his buddy was like, I'm going home. See you guys later. And he let him walk through that neighborhood by himself with an air 15. He was just, that, that was just asking for it. So no, I don't, I mean, the reality is if you're armed, you're armed, everybody's armed and you stay together until the whole thing. So over. is that what happened? He went from yeah, protecting went the from, car dealership. Had to walk down a road to get to his vehicle to Exville. They started chasing him from the car dealership. Got it. And so, and I guess that that actually had started earlier that night. Yeah. Even it started earlier, but I, again, it's just I, I get it. You you think you want to do good for whatever, but he got in a very in a he was put in a very sticky position, and he did very well. Like the reality is, everything that he did was above board and way more adult than what I would have done. Like I'd probably, st- I mean, I guarantee you it would have been a different outcome in that criminal investigation because the minute the, the reality is if you put me in a situation where I have to switch my rifle from semi or from safe to fire, I'm shooting everybody. Like y'all, if you're, if you were chasing me down the street, I don't care if you got a skateboard, an ice cream cone, whatever at the point that my life is in danger like that, everybody gets to know what, why I brought that rifle. So I just feel like he was in a terrible situation. He did again. I'm not going to, I'm not going to bash him. He, he did excellent. As far as his gun handling, when he decided to shoot and like, I don't believe that he didn't have training. I want to say that he did. He had to have some really good training, which may totally be not true. And, and I'm only saying that because he handled himself very well video in that game situation. Kid. Yeah, I know he. I know he's. I know he's playing maybe, video maybe games video, while he's video game kid, airsoft kid. I know he's. Paintball. Well, he was playing. He was actually playing Call of Duty, maybe or whatever, while he was under, you know, at trial. So uh, I don't want to say. I, I'm not trying to disparage him, but again, when you get on the when 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 you yeah. go out the bridge yeah. and you're going to fight the redcoats. You need to be arm in arm with your friends. That could have turned out so much worse for him. Not just in a, you know, maybe the kid with the skateboard gets a good hit in and kills him. Um, that's easy. But, Definitely was trying to. But that court, you know, they were doing everything. If Here's the thing. If his, if that prosecuting attorney wouldn't have been a woke um, idiot, 
and there would have been a real prosecuting attorney trying to prosecute that case, I don't think he would have made it. I mean, he, a lot of the a lot of the reasons why he was why he was not convicted was because of all the stupid shit that that prosecuting attorney was doing, like hiding evidence and doctoring videos. That's all amateur hour, and that's what you get when you go woke. When you get when you go woke, you don't hire the candidate who is best for the job. It's like you got a doctor. You want to you want to go see a doctor. You don't want to go to the woke doctor because that is not the best doctor. It's just not going to be the best doctor. You're going to get a bunch of shit mixed in with whatever that person's doing that doesn't have anything to do with what we need to do. And that's what PayPal found out, right? PayPal. Do you think do you think that was real that PayPal thing, or do you think that some no it was real some person that worked there slipped that shit in there somehow? No, I, it had to it had to been the CEO level because they they. They panic quick. They didn't like if it wasn't real. So they've shown their hand. It's not like yeah. that's going to go away. They're just going to implement it. And they kind of already have like a couple of years ago. So I used to use PayPal all the time. That's that was how I that's how I bought shit on eBay. It's PayPal. All right. And I used to use it all the time. And then a couple of years ago, they shut they locked my account down. And I'm like, okay. So I get a hold of them, and they're like, well, we need you to provide these three things. They wanted. Uh, Bank receipts, photo ID, and and something else. It was like three things. And I'm like, I'm not giving you those fucking things. What do you need them for? And they're like, well, we just need to make sure it's you and not somebody else. I go, is somebody else using my account? And they're like, no, nobody's that we know is using your account. I go, if nobody's using my account, why do you need to make sure it's me? You already, you already have my bank payment because that's how it gets paid linked, through my yeah. bank. I did actually send them my ID because I'm like, okay, I'll send a picture of my ID. How, I mean... I guess that was dumb. I shouldn't have done that. But I did send them a picture of my ID, and then they wanted these two other things. I'm like, I'm not giving you all that shit. That is exactly how bank fraud happens. And they're like, well, this is eBay, and that doesn't happen at eBay. I go, it happened at the Department of Defense. It happened at fucking Chase Manhattan. It happens with everybody. You are not some secret ninja organization that nobody can hack into your system. I go, you still have not explained to me why you want want me to use this. And so it went back and forth, and I had this. I had the eBay account. And so I just stopped using it. It was all paid off. I didn't need to worry about it. I just stopped using it. And then literally like three months ago, I'm looking at my credit report and my, my score went down. I'm like, what the fuck? Why did my score go down? You know, because I, I try and keep it in open, the happy... In open, the, inactive account? What in the happy it? zone. I try to keep it in the happy zone. No, because I had not been using the eBay account, eBay reduced my amount. So it was like, hey fuck you, we're reducing your amount because we know it's going to affect your credit score. Come back and spend with us. But And then this just happened with them, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to call them and cancel that account. So there's an alternative. Uh, Dan Bongino has something set up that's a payment gate. Tate, I don't know how serious he was. He says he's opening a fucking bank to do this. And then you have Square, I Tate. guess. Yeah. Have you watched any of his yeah, stuff? Yeah, I, I watch his stuff. Yeah. Have you seen him on, God, what was it? I can't think of the name of the show now. I've seen them everywhere. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll wrap this up. Um, sorry for any of this, guys. As you know, we don't do video or podcast sitting down, and this is what happens when we do. Oh, were we doing that? Is a that lot. Too loud, Brandon? A lot. Really? Um, I hear it? it fucking a lot in my headphones. Did you get what, like this? Was it loud? Can you turn my treble down? Turn right. my mic up? Yeah. Can we get a little more? Can we get a little more? All right. Oh. So leave them with some hope. Give them. Give them. I I, I like to say that. I'm 50 years old. Every year of my life that I can remember, something was going to annihilate mm-hmm. us. Something was going to end us. We were fully ready for Y2K. Imagine our God surprise damn. when that didn't happen. I mean, I had all my magazines loaded. It Nostradamus, was bullshit. Nostradamus, Red Dawn, Rambo, was all bullshit. of it, right? So it was bullshit. If you turned, I really had my fingers crossed for that one. If you turned off social media, like we, we used to say the news, right? Don't pay attention to the news. It's not the news anymore. It's social media. If you turned off social media... If you looked at me within arm's reach, right? War within arm's reach. If you look around, it's your immediate surroundings. Does your life look pretty good to you or does it look pretty fucked up? If you turned off social media, would most of your concerns go away? Stop asking permission. Do things that you know are right. It's allowed versus able. Do things that are going to make your life better and stop worrying about other people's shit. Now, we sit and have these conversations because you guys listen to them. Yeah, in the end, I'm going to go home and uh, nothing that's going on in the world is going to matter to me. I mean, I don't really care what's going on in Ukraine. 
I know, I know. But you have to understand, go ahead and look at the Democratic Party's position on Ukraine prior to the war. Okay? Go, go, go back and see what Nancy Pelosi thought of Lewinsky, L- 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 Linsky, whatever his name is. Go back and see what they thought about him before the war. That is one of the most, that was one of the most crookedest countries in the European Union. I mean, I don't, I don't think they're in the European Union, but in Europe. So why is it we're giving him billions and billions of dollars now? I mean, we, we've literally given them more money than we spent in Iraq and Afghanistan. Money laundering because yeah. they, they get to they take money a piece laundering. of it. Because they take a piece of it and then they send it back to Nancy and she tucks it away in her sock drawer because we need to make billionaires multi-billionaires, so when the economy collapses, they still get to live in the lifestyle that they are accustomed to. It's not uh, It's not continuity. Oh, man, I took, it's continuity of government, I not took away continuity your, of you. I took away your, your say something good. Oh, say something good. Give okay. some help. Hey, um, when all this is over and said and done. It'll, there'll be another boogeyman. Nancy, Bill Gates, um, who's that guy that runs Amazon? Bezos. Bezos. Bezos, they're going to be perfectly fine. All right, they're going to be fine. They're going to make it. I mean, it's like Metallica in the '90s when they stopped making music. They still had Ferraris and dead hookers when in the MT- trunk. When MTV stopped, okay, doing so um, those people are all going to be fine. Think about you, and think about your life and your surroundings, and how you can make that better. I mean, that's that's all it is. Is I say that what people need to be is more self reliant. As long as they're more self reliant and they're not worried about whether or not. Uh, the trucks show up on Monday or if you, if you can become a little more self-reliant and less reliant on the government, you're always going to be in a better shape. No matter what happens, no matter, no matter what happens, you're always be better shape if you can be a little more self-reliant. So just, just think about the things you can do. I'm not saying go out and buy 900 cans of soup and stuff them under your bed, maybe 12 cans. I don't know. Something, something that keeps you through, keeps you out of the chaos of the reality. The chaos of the reality is about 48 hours. If anything stops for 48 hours, there's going to be chaos. And if you don't have to go to the store to get that thing, you're going to be so much better. Like you're just, your life is going to be better if you can just sit on your front porch and smoke cigarettes while all the cars are driving by on fire and shit because something has stopped for 48 hours. You're just, you're just, life's going to be better. And then, when there's no toilet paper and you're like, hey, hey, I got some toilet paper. You want to give me some of those eggs? They're going to give you the eggs for the toilet paper. It's just the way it is. When uh, John rolls <laughs> when John rolls into the town square with his 12 eggs and shit, you'll be able to fucking trade with him. Just, you know, think about that. And you better just, not bring toilet paper because I've, make got, your, I've got some. Make your life better. Don't tell them where the national stockpile is. Make your life better. And just be happy. I mean, there's the, again, truth of the matter is, you've, John will tell you. Uh, you've seen my toilet paper collection. Yeah, if the if the Russians attack tomorrow, there's nothing you can do about it. There's no one you can call. It won't matter. But there are several times in my life when the Russians were going to attack. And yeah, we've been I, fighting had, the Russians And forever. had I taken all my money and gotten ready for the Russians to attack, I wouldn't have this business here. This is so true. if you take your time and your effort and put it into something that will make more business and more money for you, and think about at, the, at the worst, right? So you you accumulate wealth and you build things and you have something to pass on to your next generation. And if you truly think that times are getting hard, wouldn't it be a lot easier for you if you had fucking money or eggs? <laughs> yeah, or eggs. Or I mean, eggs or milk or we we bought three hundred chickens when we were concerned about eggs. How many chickens do you have now? Three hundred, maybe ish. What do you do with, I mean, not anyone to ask. We feed them to the dogs at this point. Yeah, man. I don't want to. I that's kill them too frequently. Many. Well, I was just thinking about the eggs. Oh, we give them you away. You have man. millions of eggs. Um, we give them, I give 120 to one place. My employees for the last three years have not bought any eggs in their Which houses. is good. And that's, a, that's the thing about making your life better. Make your life better, and if you can, make your neighbor's life better. And if you do that, if you, if you do that, if you attempt to make your circle better, and the world does go to hell in a handbasket, I promise you, your neighbor's going to come over and be like, hey, what can we do to make this situation better? If you are flipping off your neighbor and you don't sweep the snow off his step because you think he's an old grumpy asshole and the world goes to hell in the handbasket, that grumpy asshole is the one you're going to have to worry about because he's going to come over and take all your fucking eggs because Plus, he was in Korea and he's got he knows an M1 how to grand. kill a motherfucker with a shovel. He's got an M1 grand. Yeah, he's got an M1 grand. So don't mess with him. All right, guys, turn that yeah. shit off.
<laughs> that fucking music, man.